Welcome everyone. Today we are going to paint a meditative painting of a Buddha with some gold lotus flowers. And I'm going to use metallic Frederick's canvas. This is the pearl, the pearlescent color. And it's not required. You could use just a regular white canvas or you can paint it absolutely any color you like. I am taking a little bit of gloss gel and really kind of scraping it loosely onto the canvas. I don't want this to be real heavy, but I do want just a little bit of texture on this Buddha. And please remember that everything that I'm doing in this video is completely optional. There's nothing that's required, no colors, no techniques, no materials, nothing. Now I did get the idea for this painting from a stock image and you can download that off of my website. There's a link in the video description below. And I gridded the image on my canvas and the grid for it is also in that download. Now I'm gonna skip over the gridding process here in the video, however, because I get a lot of questions about gridding, if you watch until I'm done painting this, the entire gridding process is at the end of this video and I'll walk you through that there. Now it's really important that you let that dry completely. So this is a couple of hours later, all of that gel is completely dry and I'm using my one inch flat. I did wet it in my jar a bit and I'm using some of the iridescent rich silver by Liquitex, just kind of scumbling it on. And then I decided that was a little premature. It wasn't quite doing what I needed yet. So I'm going to move on to some Payne's gray. I really want you to feel comfortable in exploring different techniques and mediums and colors for this painting. Again, you don't have to use the same colors I'm using. I want you to, you know, find your own way in building texture. What colors do you like to see? What colors make you feel peaceful? I'm using matte medium here because I want to make sure that each layer is nice and transparent. Matte medium helps it stay transparent. And you know, that's kind of how we're going to build texture is through transparency. And that Payne's gray is sitting down inside the texture from the gel that I put on the canvas. And that was really nice. A little water just to help it move around. I thought I'd try out some finger painting, but that didn't, it didn't quite feel right for this painting. So don't worry, I'm not tricking you into finger painting in this video. I was really trying to create a space for myself where I could just get lost in a painting and not worry about anything, not think about anything. So as you can see in the back there, I've got my little, my little uh, salt candle burning and I've got an incense burning and I was listening to some, some soft music. It was, you know, a, a good experience. That's, what I want out of painting is to be able to get lost and not worry and just enjoy myself. I don't want to paint and be stressed out and, you know, upset about the way things are going or worried that things aren't going to turn out right. I just like to just do it. And that's what I want for you too, is just to go at it and not to worry about it. That gel tends to have a little bit of a stickier surface. And so sometimes the paint doesn't move very smoothly on it. That's why I'm using that uh, water in the spray bottle to get it moving a little bit. It's just when the paint hits that gel, it really grabs hold and just kind of stays there. Okay, I'm just gonna dry this layer. I do want each layer to be dry before I move on to the next. A little bit more Payne's Gray. And that has a little extra water in it. And I'm just kind of playing with the texture again, doing some splatters. That wasn't quite enough splatters, so. 
I know that when I do that, that scares a lot of you. <laughs> you don't have to do that. I think it's fun to do. And, and then before that dries, I'm going to go in there and break some of it up. Spread some of it across the canvas. Let some of the other little bits stay there. And a palette knife. This is all pretty much dry. Some of it's still a little wet. And I'm just going to scrape on some of that iridescent bright silver. This silver is pretty transparent. But I'm applying it fairly thickly. Just part of that, you know, experimenting that I was doing. This painting could easily be done in, you know, black and white if you wanted, or rainbow colors. You could do it in, you know, tons and tons of colors, or different reds, different blues, really anything. So if you don't have any of the colors or you don't have any metallic colors or metallic canvas, don't worry about that. Again, it's just about finding what energizes you, what you can do to feel that calm and confidence while you're painting. Grabbed some of my other silver because I ran out of that first one. All right, that paint is dry and I'm gonna mix some silver in with some, I believe I used Indenthreme Blue. I just want a little bit of a blue that's quite transparent. So I'm using some matte medium and just almost glazing randomly across the canvas some of the silvery blue. The silver I'm using is the transparent one, so it's not going to turn into this bright blue silver. It's just a little bit of a glaze.
and I'm just spreading this color randomly. I'm not trying to place it in specific places. All right, once that dried, I drew the grid and the face onto the canvas. And again, you can see that after I'm done painting here. I'm moving on to my 5 8 inch angle brush and I've got some matte medium and some Payne's gray and I'm just gonna start adding the shadows. And I had a hangnail that was making me crazy, so that's why we've got the awesome Bob Ross Band-Aid. So I'm just lightly and thinly kind of scrubbing this into the shadow areas. I'm not worried about getting it just right just yet, as dark as I want it or anything like that. I'm just kind of marking out where those shadows are gonna be. Kind of scrub them with the tip of that angle brush. And through the spiral here, just trying to be very mindful of everything that I'm doing. I'm trying not to let my thoughts run away, you know, thinking about other aspects of my job or things I also need to do that day or, you know, other thoughts that might be troubling or just take my attention away from what I'm doing. I'm just really working hard to just be aware of every single brush stroke and observe every brush stroke, not, not force every brush stroke, if that makes sense. Don't be afraid to take that dark color out quite far. Just keep it nice and thin. I'm, I end up doing several layers on it and you know it ends up being darker than you think you are gonna want it to be at first. So you know just block it in, go as dark as you dare and then once you've got kind of that first layer on everything come back then and you know add another layer and deepen those shadows a bit more I don't know why I kept going over it right there thinking I was going to get my shadows as dark as I wanted it right off the bat but I quickly decide that I don't need to do that going around the bendy hair and just creating a little bit of a light shadow.
just a little glaze of that darker color all across most of the face. Almost all of the face is gonna get at least a slight glaze of this color. Just wherever you see shadow in the reference image, just make it a little bit darker there and work on building that. Nice dark line on the inside of the eye there. Don't be terribly worried if you get some of the color in an area that you want to be very highlighted because we are going to come back toward the end and just bring up some of those highlights with a little bit of a lighter color. So for now, just get that shadow color where you know you want it. And I know you can still see the grid on here, but really scrubbing over it with a little bit of matte medium in this color gets those lines off. And I'm pretty much gonna go over this entire painting so you, you won't see those at all. They'll all wash off. If there is anything left over at the end, I can either take the eraser off of the chalk pencil or you know, a little bit of a damp brush and just kind of scrub at it lightly and it'll come right off. I love to paint these peaceful Buddha faces because it's, you know, a good reminder to, to keep your calm while you're painting. Even if, you know, something feels like it's not going the way you want it, it's kind of hard to, you know, get irritated and, and freak out if you're painting something that looks so calm. back up there a little bit so you can kind of see how it's all coming together and you can see how I'm not being overly concerned with getting my shadows as dark as I want them. I started to up there on the forehead by the hair but quickly abandoned that and I'll come back to it later as I keep building the layers. Payne's gray is a good color to do this with because it's already quite transparent. So you don't have to use as much matte medium to scrub that out and get it to glaze. If you're using Mars Black, you'd wanna be very, very careful because just a little bit of Mars Black can really cover everything. That and because I'm using such cool colors here, the silver and the blue, Mars Black is very, very warm. It's almost Especially against cool colors like this, Mars Black can look like a very dark brown, but Payne's Gray has a very cool color to it. It's, it's, it's a very blue, almost black. So Payne's Gray is a really good choice for this. If you were doing browns or gold or reds, then 
you know, Mars Black might be a little bit of a, it might be a better idea to use Mars Black than Payne's Gray, but you'd still want to use a lot of medium just to make sure it doesn't get too dark and completely obliterate everything. Just building that shadow there around the edge of the nose. I started taking that shadow in too far on the top edge of the nose, but notice I don't worry about it. I come back in a little bit and correct that. Just kind of keeping those lines around the, the nostrils a little bit softer. I don't want super hard lines there. very loosely outlining the lips, almost with a sketching type motion. One thing I want you to remember as you're painting is that each brush stroke is really just one more step in practice. So what I mean is no matter how long you've been painting, no matter how accomplished you may be, every time you pick up the paintbrush and put it to the canvas, you're practicing. So just remember that every brush stroke you make in this painting is one step closer to you know, achieving your goal of mastering the technique that you're working on. And it really doesn't matter how you feel about that brush stroke. It could be a brush stroke that you're not happy with. It could be one you're very happy with. But regardless, it's all practice. It's all going to help you hone your skill. See right there, I took that dark color up just a bit too far onto the, the top edge of the nose. But notice I didn't worry about it, I just moved on. I'm gonna finish up using the paint that's on my brush. And now I've got a clean brush with just a little bit of matte medium on it and I'm gonna scumble that over top of that paint that I didn't want there. If you can get to it quick enough with just a little matte medium, it comes right off. Now I'm gonna to go to my quarter inch angle brush and a little bit more Payne's Gray, a little bit less matte medium. And I'm really doing the same thing. I'm just kind of putting down that dark color where I want the shadow and then gently breaking up the line a little bit so that it's not an overly hard line. I'm not really smoking these lines out until they're just, you know, a big fuzz, but I also don't want super hard, overly crisp lines. So I lay down the paint and then just dash over it a bit to break up the line.
See, just plop that down in that line and then gently break it up a little. And again, don't worry if you lose too much of the light area. We are going to come back and add some light colors later. So if you end up getting too much of the dark color throughout there, you can get back those light areas. Still using my quarter inch angle, but I'm starting to take some of that dark color out farther and deepening up those shadows on the face. Just making sure there's a nice transition from the shadow into the lighter area of the hair there. So keeping a little bit of a deeper shadow on the bottom edge. I'm gonna start deepening the shadow around the edge of the bendy hair, particularly on this lower side. And then scumbling it down into the face a bit. back up to my larger angle brush and I'm just going to continue deepening the shadows across the face. Remember that if your shadows and highlights are not exactly like mine or exactly like the images or you know exactly like what you what you think they should be like that it's all okay. That's the great thing about art is things can be however, however you want them to be or however they end up being. Sometimes a piece of art takes on a life of its own. I know that that happens to me a lot where I start with a specific idea about how something needs to be or how I want something to be, but the painting really does seem to kind of guide itself and it ends up being something completely different or it has a completely different feel or mood from how I envisioned it having when I started. And that can be a little distressing when you're first learning how to paint. 
But I think that if you go into a painting with that expectation that things are going to be different ultimately than what you set out to do, then there's no frustration or disappointment associated with that. Now, I let the process be more organic and free form. I may go into a painting with a goal in mind, but be open to that thing changing. And if you follow it, if you follow where that painting goes, rather than trying to fight it and force it to be something else, I think ultimately you'll learn more in the process, you'll enjoy the process a lot more certainly, and you may end up being a lot happier with the finished product. But certainly if you fight against it, if you really struggle to maintain control of the final outcome of the painting, then you may still really like the way the painting ends up, but you're going to have a less enjoyable time and you may struggle to learn something that you could have learned if, if you would have just gone with the process. Now, I just find it's much, much less frustrating to, to just let it take me where it's going to go. And that's kind of exciting too, to not know exactly what's going to happen with the painting, but to kind of be along for the ride and observe how it changes and evolves. That can be a really fun and exciting process.
The cool thing about this silver is at one angle, it may appear that the silver completely covers any other color that it kind of takes over. But at another angle, the silver is going to be very transparent and you'll be able to see the layers underneath it. So it almost gives it a little bit of a holographic feel, which I think is really fun. just lightly glazing some of the silver over the shadow color. And in the spiral here, just bringing back some of those highlight areas. We will come back again in a little bit and put a, a much lighter color in there, but this is a good start. Going back to my half inch angle and just continuing the exact same thing with the silver and a little bit of matte medium and just scumbling it into the areas that I want to be more highlighted. Just running a little bit of that silver down that area where I told you I wanted to main maintain a bit of a highlight. Get back a little of the highlight that I lost there on the nostrils. I wasn't paying very good attention to where my camera was pointed here. I apologize. I've found that little meditative place and 
it was really hard to pay attention to camera angles while I was painting. So thankfully, you guys for the most part probably don't have to deal with that. So you can just get lost in it and not have to worry about camera angles. I went a little bit thicker and heavier with my brush strokes here on the lips and I really like the kind of sketchy effect that I got with them. Also I realized that my lips were, the shape of them was off just a little bit so I'm going to show you how I easily corrected that without having to redo everything. Now I'm using my number two round just got some Payne's grain, some matte medium. This is the next day, that's why my palette's all clean. And again, I'm digging deeper into those little shadow areas. That's why I'm using the smaller brush so I can make sure to get super dark down into the shadows, but still working to break up the line just a little bit, but I wanna be more precise with the shadow placement here.
I find that when I start doing these fine little details with the small brushes, this is where I can really kind of dig into that meditative place in my painting. But that can only happen if you don't allow yourself to, you know, obsess over every little brush stroke. Is that place right? Does that look right? Don't worry about that because remember that no matter what happens, you can always fix something later. For now, just get it on the canvas. Just enjoy every single brush stroke. Judge it and fix it later. Okay, and we'll define the edges of the bindi a little bit more and deepen the shadow there. doing a little bit of scrubbing with my round brush, but I'm not being too aggressive with it. So if you're using a nice round brush, don't feel like you really have to grind it into the canvas. I'm just kind of scumbling a little bit, not enough to really damage the shape of the brush. Just going to define the edge of the eyebrows and deepen those shadows a bit.
redefining that line, but I am taking care to break it up just a little bit. Just picked up a little matte medium there on the tip of my finger. There's that little bit of a scumble with the Payne's Gray to make sure that line is broken up, like I was saying. Same thing down the edge of the nose here. I definitely want a line, but I don't want it to be razor sharp. So I am just scumbling it a little bit so that it's a little less defined. and over the eyebrow too.
here now I'm going to start adding the darker line under the nose including the little bit of a wider dark line right there for the nostril See how I just press my brush a little bit flatter right there under the nostril. And that gave me a little bit of a wider line. All right, I'm back to my 5 8 inch angle and I'm using quite a bit of matte medium, just a little bit of Payne's Gray, and I'm just kind of glazing in broad strokes some of this Payne's Gray for my final shadow layer. Remember that using glazing techniques like this, which means thinning down the paint with a medium to where it's very, very transparent, those glazing techniques are what really help you build layers and build life and dimension into your painting. And, you know, if you've ever wanted to kind of get the look of oil paint with acrylic paint, you're better off glazing your colors than just mixing colors. Doing that glazing is going to help get that look of oil paint.
really deepening the shadow in that bottom corner. That's where one of my lotus flowers is going to be. And so I felt like it needed to be quite dark there to really set that flower off of the Buddha face. Just adding a hint of a shadow on the downside, on the lower side of the bindi, using my quarter inch angle. Back into my rich silver, so the opaque one, and I'm gonna change the shape of the lips because this one is a little more opaque. If I apply it heavily, then it will pretty much cover and I can change the shape of the lips. All right, now I'm mixing just a tiny bit of titanium white in with the silver, I'm still using my quarter inch angle and a tiny bit of matte medium. And here's where I'm really gonna start getting the highlight color in. Now notice I'm being quite sketchy with it. I'm not painting in everything. I'm just kind of plopping it down where I want it to be nice and bright and then kind of sketching it out to break it up. and see how much a huge difference that makes. It really helps push the dark areas down into some deep shadows. using very light pressure. That way the white the, or the light color, it just kind of drags around. It doesn't just, you know, completely cover everything. It just keeps that sketchy kind of textury look.
See how I just picked up a tiny bit of matte medium and it helped me move that paint around because it was kind of stuck where I put it, but just a little matte medium and it kind of re-wets it enough so it can scoot around. Just dashing ever so slightly the tiniest hint of that bright color on the edge of the eyelid. So I'm not completely outlining it, I'm just dashing a bit of the color there. And now I'm taking that lighter silver mixture with a little bit of titanium white into the hair in the spiral. 
Sometimes I'm not going over a part. You may notice here and there where I just leave kind of that blue silver showing and not, you know, just completely covering everything. It's just little dashes of the color here and there. All right, now I've got my chalk pencil and everything is completely dry and I'm just gonna loosely sketch out where I want each of the lotus flowers. Don't worry about being precise with it. You know, the, the chalk is not the ultimate say. And even once you put your paint on, as you'll see, that's not your ultimate say, you can still change it. So just get an idea of really where that flower is gonna be.
here I'm using my number two round and I actually started out with the gold Liquitex ink but as you can see it was very transparent I thought it would be more opaque than that so I moved to the gold heavy body Liquitex paint which was a little bit more opaque I actually ended up mixing the two the ink and the paint but you know you can do whatever you want if you have a gold acrylic marker or you could use black paint or white paint or hot pink paint anything you really want honestly this gold was a little harder to work with than I like and I did end up going over everything at least twice which I don't make you watch me do I just go over it the one time in the video but to get the final gold color, I did have to go over, over everything twice. The chalk did not affect the gold at all. It pretty much just cleaned right off, mixed in with the paint, and where it was still on the canvas, when I was finished, just a, a little bit of a wipe with a damp brush really took it off. All right, moving up to the lotus up here. And honestly, the lotus up at the top here did not end up being my favorite. Sometimes my drawing skills are not as good as they need to be. I can draw fairly good when it's, you know, going to be part of a part of a, a larger whole of a painting, you know. I'm pretty confident with sketching, but the whole drawing smooth lines is really not my forte and while I feel like the one at the bottom turned out pretty good this top one needed a little bit of help in a couple of places but I think I'm fine showing you that because I think that a, a lot of people are like that and may feel like their drawing skills aren't quite what they need to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I masked it. And I feel like I did a fairly good job of kind of masking what it was that I didn't like and you know, not worrying about that my drawing wasn't perfect. And so I hope that that helps you also if you feel like your drawing skills aren't, you know, quote unquote, perfect.
just some little detail lines. And in this lotus in particular, these are the, the real things that I feel like I struggled with. In the bottom lotus, I feel like I had a, a good grasp on them, but that's because I used this one as my practice. So <laughs> this one has some, some wonky little lines. And just a few little dots here and there. Just giving the lotus kind of a graphic look. It's this petal here where these lines really got out of control, but I don't let them dry completely and I actually come and erase them and then do them again. All right, here with a clean, damp, half-inch angle, and I'm just lightly scumbling off those lines. They were pretty much dry, but because they hadn't had time to cure, they weren't, you know, completely set. So they came off pretty easily. And then I'll add them again. And then we'll go add the little detail lines to the lotus at the bottom. As you can tell, I went over this lotus with another coat of the gold, so it stands out much, much more here.
And here I've already gone over this one a second time as well. And now it's completely dry. And I'm taking some Payne's Gray with matte medium and I'm glazing over it. I felt like it was a, a little bit too much kind of plopped on top. And I feel like glazing some of that dark over top of it in the corner, it does two things. It kind of pulls it into the image, but also it kind of helps mask that wonky line up at the top. And you know, you could do this in layers just like we did everything else. You can do the gold and then kind of glaze it with some of the dark like I'm doing and then maybe come back with a thin version of the gold and go back over the lines that you put the dark over so that there's a little bit of a gradient between what's dark and what's bright gold and I did actually do that I didn't get it on video unfortunately but really I just took a very thin version of the gold on this lotus and outlined a couple of those lines that I wanted to keep up at the top so it looks more now the way the lotus at the bottom is gonna look so as you can see here I really obliterated that ugly line in that top corner but down here I don't quite obliterate it as much I just kind of glaze it, but by taking that thin gold over top of the dark corner, it kind of brought that back a little bit more. And that is really all there is to this painting. Remember that if you want more information on gridding, how I put the grid on the canvas, and just information in general about how I decided to make the grid the size that I did, keep watching because I've got my gridding process here at the, at the tail end of this video. If you don't need the information on gridding, then I'm gonna say thank you so much for watching and painting along with me. And I hope to see you next week as well. All right, here we are back where I just finished my texture painting and I'm gonna mark out a grid on my canvas that is two inches square. So what that means is I've got my ruler here and every two inches I'm making a mark. Now the grid that you can download off of my website is formatted for a 16 by 20 inch canvas, which is what I'm using here, and it's got a two inch grid. And I decided on the two inch grid because the drawing isn't very complex. Now for a very complex image, it's a lot easier to have a smaller grid, so maybe a one inch. But since this was a, a pretty simple drawing, I felt like two inches was good. Now I'm gonna connect those marks that I just made for my vertical lines of my grid. I also, in the video description below, have a link to my blog where I have a post about how to get a grid on your image. Now, there's a million ways that you can do it. So if the method that I use in my blog post isn't helpful for you, a quick Google search will show you dozens of ways that you can do it. You can even print out an image and you know draw it by hand on there. The most important thing to remember is that you want to keep your image gridded specifically to the aspect ratio of your canvas. So what I mean by that is a 12 by 16 grid is not going to fit a 16 by 20. You'll want to make sure that you do a little bit of math or use a app that will do it for you to you know, make up for the difference between the two sizes. And I know it sounds super complicated, but really once you find the method that works for you, again, whether it's an app or a computer program like Photoshop, 
once you find that method, it's a simple thing to do. And I know a lot of people kind of dig in their heels and don't want to do gritting because it seems complicated, but it's really not complicated and it's an incredibly helpful tool. If you can learn how to grid, you can put any image on any size canvas you like. So what I'm doing here is just drawing my image. I'm looking at the grid image that I have for you and I'm seeing how each piece moves through each square. And that's all you have to do. It's basically taking a large image, breaking it down into many tiny little square images. And it's much easier to draw a single line through one square than it is to, you know, draw an entire face on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. So as long as you can go from square to square and mimic for the most part what's in each square, you don't have to pay attention to, you know, does this look like an eye? Did I draw the nose right? As long as you can put in essentially what's in each square, the image will come out onto your canvas. I chose to use my black chalk pencil here since I'm going to use a lot of gray colors and I've already got a lot of gray colors on my canvas because I figured it wouldn't be, you know, it, it wouldn't be hard to cover and if it showed it would be okay because it would blend in with the rest of the colors. I like these chalk pencils because they have an eraser on the end and they really do erase quite easily. And the, the brand of these pencils is Generals. And as always, there is a link in the video description to where you can get some. It's an affiliate link to my Amazon account. And remember that every time you buy something through my Amazon account, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but I might get just a little bit of a kickback, which, you know, every, every little bit helps helps me keep doing what I'm doing, whether I'm using that money to pay my rent at my studio or, you know, buy more equipment, more paint and other supplies. So if you buy through my Amazon affiliate link, I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you. And you'll get an awesome product at a pretty darn good price. So we both win. See, I have to check it every once in a while and just count the squares that I'm looking at, make sure that I'm on the right track. And every once in a while I do mess up and I have to erase something because I didn't count properly or I wasn't paying attention. So if that happens to you when you're gritting, don't feel like it's because it's complicated and you're, you're not good at it. It can be a little bit confusing sometimes if you don't pay attention. And that happens to me too. But like I said, this technique is just so helpful that any of the, the troubles that might come with it are completely worth it to me. And I did time lapse this just a little bit because it can take a bit of time. And honestly, that's all there is to gritting. It's a really simple process. It's a super helpful tool. And I hope that you guys give it a try. If not, I feel like this image is simple enough that you can just freehand draw it. And I almost did, but I really like the precision of gritting. So if you have any other questions on gritting, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments section below and do make sure that you check out my blog because I think that will answer a lot of your questions about the process. And if you try this painting, I would love to see how it turns out. Make sure you follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Just search Painting with Jane on either and you'll find me. Thank you as always to my awesome sponsor Fredericks for providing the gorgeous canvas that I used for this painting. 
And thank you to all of you for painting and hanging out with me every single week. I hope you enjoyed this meditative painting and I look forward to seeing you next time.